Okay. The jam has been cleared. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we are very blessed this morning to have the Pickens with us. And um, they are the pastors, the senior pastors of C3 Toronto. They've just, uh, they, they are Aussies who've, who went to Canada all those years ago, planted ch uh, a church there. And out of that, it was birthed three other churches in Toronto and all doing extremely well. Uh, they are, they've also been region, uh, recently appointed as the regional directors for the Canada region. And yeah, let's give them a round of applause. They run a great church, great leadership. They are church builders. So we are very, very blessed to have them with us this morning. Before we head into Singapore tomorrow, and uh, you're going to be blessed. So let's give a real warm welcome to Pastor Sam Pickens. Oh man, it is amazing to be here. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. And uh, I've got a photo of our, it's awesome to be here, Pastor Clarence. And uh, I know Pastor Debbie would be absolutely crushing it where she's preaching. And so you, you, don't, you don't get the best of the house, Pastor Debbie. Uh, you, uh, you get me today. Uh, but okay, I'll try and, try and fill those shoes. But I got a photo of our family. Um, uh, if... Uh, this is our family. We're on, we're on vacation in this shot. This is one of the few happy shots that we've got all together. No, but I wanted to shout out Pastor Jess because, um, you know, she, I've got, mums, you know, do an absolutely incredible job behind the scenes. I've got, uh, I've got so many vivid memories of Jess dressed up and when the kids are sick and she's just, when the kids are sick, I, I push them away. I like quarantine myself away from them, but Jess is just, it's like snot and vomit and everything going on and she's like full makeup and just embraces them and just always cleaning up the mess. And it's the heroes moments behind the scenes, right? For our mums, it's absolutely so incredible. But put the photo back up. I want to I wanna brag on my kids for a second. So we've got three kids. That's Noah in the back. Um, any, any, any good kid is like, we named them Noah, right? And, and, but he, he's 10 and he's like our little intellect. He, Intellect, he can solve a Rubik's Cube in like 60 seconds. And uh, he, then we got Kenzie in the back there. She's our middle child and uh, she takes after me. She's the one that we might be a little bit worried about, but she's, no, she's, she's, she's absolutely creative. And, uh, and, and then we got little Ayla down the front, who's our four year old, and she is just the jokester, the prankster. Uh, and probably the one that's most undisciplined in our, in our house, but I just love them so much, and they're back home with the in-laws, they're back home with Jess's parents, and uh, anyway, happy Mother's Day to everybody, and uh, it really is just a, a, an honor to be here. We've got the C3 Global Conference coming up this week, and, uh, and I've been a part of C3 for, uh, what now, 21 years maybe. Um, and I just see, I see Emmanuel and Melaine over here, and uh, we did Bible college together back then, 20 years ago. And, uh, and it's just awesome uh, to be a part of a global movement. If you're new here, uh, there's about 600 plus churches around the world, and um, there's a bunch of churches in Canada and, and the U.S. And has anyone, has anyone been to Canada? I mean, it, look, it looks like Toronto right here. Toronto is a very multicultural city. We have uh, pretty much every immigrant from across the world that you could think of in Toronto, and, and, uh, and, it's, and it's beautiful. But um, uh, Deb and Clarence are just absolutely amazing people and also stepping up in the regional director role and uh, and it really is just an honor to be here and this church is like so anointed yeah. the worship is so anointed you're in a very awesome place like ar around the world in recent times there's been a lot of distrust towards leadership you're not sure if you can trust leadership uh, through COVID and everything I don't, I, I don't know what it was like here but it was absolutely crazy in, in North America and people aren't really sure. Uh, they really fend for themselves and don't put a lot of trust in, in other people these days, especially young people. But I want to tell you that your leaders, you can trust your leaders. They are proven. They are godly, anointed, uh, amazing men and women of God. And I want to tell you that when you, when you come into alignment in the house and unity in the house and you can trust this house, 
Amen? How many people love C3 Destiny? How many people love this church? I know. So let's pray. Father, just thank you because we come around the Word today. On this special Mother's Day, Lord God, I just thank you that you're speaking through your word. I thank you, Jesus, Lord, that our hearts are open to ready and to receive. And Lord God, that we would be receptive to the Holy Spirit and receptive to what you're saying to us today. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I love it. I love a vocal church. Okay, so you're already, I can tell you're a vocal church, but I love that culture. When you say Amen, it's like spiritual tongues. It's like, you know, you can hear the word and the word's out there, but, but there's one thing to be preached to and there's one thing to receive an impartation from the word. And when you say amen, it's like getting the big spiritual tongs, kind of like at a buffet, and you're like, yeah, that's for me. And so you grab that from heaven and you get it down and you eat that and put it in your spirit. And, and also it will make me like preach a little bit better, um, which is good. So say amen. 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 All right, you're good. All right, so turn in your Bible to First Thessalonians and chapter 1, and uh, I want to talk about the idea of the model church, the church, the role model church. This church, Destiny, is a role model church. Um, this is a church, it's a prototype, it's a, it's a model for other churches that are going to be started from this church. Uh, you might be a church planner, a ch church leader yourself. I know in 2003 when God first spoke to me about being a church planter, starting a church when I was 18 years old, I didn't really believe it at the time, but God had spoken a word to me. And then 10 years later, um, we sat on that vision, we submitted that vision to leadership and uh, got married to Jess in that time, and, and then we moved. We felt that a church was in us to be in North America. Originally, we thought it was going to be in the U.S., but then Jess has dual citizenship. We ended up moving to Toronto. Uh, we moved to Calgary first, another place in Canada. We served there. We helped uh, Pastor Lorne and Kelly Tebbett. They're awesome C3 leaders, and we helped them plant churches and helped them with youth and young adult ministry, and then we moved across the other side of the country to the largest city in Canada with six other people. There was eight of us in 2013, and we started a church called C3 Toronto. And God has been amazing through that time. Uh, nearly, uh, just over this year, just over 8,000 people have given their lives to Christ through C3 Toronto. Isn't that amazing? Can you praise God for that? And it's just awesome, the team that we get to work with and our church, and, and it's awesome. But it, and I want, I want to have this kind of church. It's in 1 Thessalonians. And so this is, this is Paul's first congregation. This is his first letter. This is, this, is, this is a priority church for Paul in 1 Thessalonians. And let's just read what he says to this church. He says in verse 2, We always thank God for all of you. And I can tell that if Paul was writing a letter today, that he would write to C Destiny C3. He would write the same letter to you. I could hear Paul saying that he would thank God for this church. Thank God for the vibrancy that we see in the children. Thank God for our, when, when Pastor Jess and I were coming in today, I believe you guys are the most hospitable church in all of C3. Yeah. Like I can tell, just the amount of hugs and touch and love that we got. Got a, I'm, a, I'm a touch guy, I like it, you know. I, I'm a hugger, anyone a hugger in the room? And so we thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. I want to be that church for good reasons. We remember, somebody say remember. remember. We remember before God and Father your work, somebody say work. work. Now when I do this, when I get you to repeat a word, I'm, gonna, it, I'm focusing on it, and, and I'm going to draw back to it later in the preach. So we remember, what, what are the three things that, that are remembered in this verse? We remember your work, say work, work. produced by faith. Your labor, somebody say labor. labor, prompted by love and your endurance. Say endurance. endurance. So there's work, there's labor, and there's endurance. This makes for a great church. Endurance inspired by hope. In our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that He has chosen you. You are chosen by God. Amen. This church didn't happen by mistake. This is a chosen church. Chosen 
by because our, our gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power power and I'm, I was in the worship today you were in the worship today and it, and because you got a heartbeat you would understand that there is power in the worship FA is that your name FA come up here I want to pray for you is it are you married to someone around there somewhere bring it bring your wife up Amen. Come up here, F.A. Are you Nigerian? Are you a Nigerian, brother? Yes, oh, awesome. Our, one of our location pastors is Nigerian at home and a, a most incredible heritage. And, and I, 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 see, I see what I picture. What's your name? Lisa. Lisa. F.A. and Lisa. Awesome. How long have you been married? Are you married? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been married? Oh, beautiful. All right. Hold hands. Hold hands. F.A. How many people love F.A. and Lisa? I see, see, I, I see a smile over you because Jesus says the joy of the Lord is your strength. I, Lisa, Lisa carries the natural anointing of this smile, the joy of the Lord, and I see it coming out of you. I, you know, you, when you were worship leading, I, I see you dancing like a Nigerian in your spirit. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you look around at some of those weddings and the after party afterwards, you go, like, these people don't know how to dance. But, but yeah, see, I told you. But, I, but whether you actually physically do it or not, but I see you strengthening the church through the anointing of your worship leading with that spirit of dance. And, and, and that what it will do is that I, I see when I look around when I look around this region, I could picture depression. I could picture people's lives being destroyed. But God has chosen you, chosen you as a couple, and that you will bring this joy. And it's not a, it's not a, this isn't like a weak joy. It's not a lofty joy. This is a rooted and grounded. This isn't the pursuit of happiness. That's not what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You know that you know, even in spiritual warfare and some of those things, some of the hard times and, and when you're combating depression and mental illness and things like that, this spirit of praise is coming from you. It's going to change young people. It's going to shift the church. And, and Lisa, as you're hearing this, I, I, you, 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 as you support FA and as you, as you bring this, you're going to constantly... See, see, the thing with our wives is they are like the thermostat in our house and your words matter. Lisa, and as you, you, you will sometimes see F.A. and you'll be like, you know, he could struggle in the mind. I see that sometimes and he could doubt himself. But your words will be like the thermostat to turn the heat up of God in his life. And, I could, and you're going to remind him of this calling. You're going to remind him that God has chosen you guys as a couple and you're going to stand up strong in this anointing and you're going to see the joy shift things in young people and shift things in the church. Every time you worship, Lee, don't look out at this congregation as if this is it. Look at, look at thousands upon thousands of people that are going to get shifted and step up in that anointing. So, Father God, I thank you so much for F.A. and Lisa. Lord God, I thank you that the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord God is upon them, for you have anointed them. I thank you for this spirit of joy, for this dance, for this smile on them. And, Lord God, that they would lead people in worship in this way, and it would be a breaking of things on, their, on other people's lives. It would, it would break strongholds. It would break chains of people's lives and I, and I see you stepping up in anointing in that way and do not let pride enter your heart make sure that you always remain humble like the chosen people of God that you are in the name of Jesus and everybody said amen amen amen, amen. bless you guys so good Lisa I also just you can go and you can see it see but but I also saw that you're believing for a promise and that God's saying yes I also saw that, that there is something in your heart that you're believing for, and the answer is yes. Um, okay, so where was I up to? Chosen, gospel came out with you, not simply with words, but with power. Power, and with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. Deep conviction. This is a deeply convicted church. You know how we lived among you for your sake. Verse 6, you became imitators of us and the Lord and you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with joy given by the Holy Spirit. 
When you and I welcome the call of God on our lives, we have to welcome it. We understand that there's going to be opposition against it. When you are in the bullseye of God's calling, you're also simultaneously in the crosshairs of the devil. The devil does not want you to say yes to God. But this is a church that say yes to God. This is a church that opt in. You are, you are an opt in person. You are not someone that sits by the sidelines. You are someone that says yes to God. When you do that, there's going to be opposition against it. When you do that, there is going to be resistance that will come against it. So take the resistance as a compliment. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's chosen you. And, and you're welcome to join in the midst of severe suffering. And you became a model. Somebody say model. model. A model to all the believers in Macedonia, in Achaia. And the Lord's message rang out from you. Not only from Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has become known everywhere. This church is not known yet, as it will be known. This this church has not seen the fruit that is coming. This church has seen some fruit. This church has raised some level of leader. This church has has already, you know, the, the... new vision into India and planting seven locations in India. This is just a seed of things to come. What is coming out of this house? What is already starting in this house is dormant under the surface. But our obedience to God and our ability to step into the fact that God has chosen us actually is going to bring new momentum to this house. It's, it's already started and we got to see it and we got to believe it. But I want to talk about these three things because these are the th- three things that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. These three things remain. Does anyone know that verse? What is it? Faith, hope, and love. And I don't know if you heard me reading cha- verse 3 of 1 Thessalonians, but verse 3 says what? The work produced by faith. Your labor prompted by love. And your endurance inspired by hope in Jesus Christ. There's faith, hope, and love right there. This is the recipe of a church that thrives. And it's this church. These are the things that started destiny. These are the things that will remain in destiny. If we don't actually stop doing these things, we will see the lid lifted, potential unlocked. We will see this church going to, like, talk about destiny We haven't even scratched the surface yet. My job here this morning is to remind you of the ingredients of a model church. This is how you bake the bread of a great church. Faith, hope, and love. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay, so let's talk about it. Say talk about it. I will. All right. Number one, work produced by faith. Work produced by faith. Okay, faith produces a great work. When Pastor Deb and Clarence first dreamed about this church, it didn't come through anything but faith. And what's going to sustain us in the future is nothing but faith. Faith is the evidence of things to come. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You and I cannot get conservative once we start to experience the goodness of God. Sometimes it's good to have nothing because you're desperate and in faith. But the problem with answered prayer is sometimes people get answered prayer that they were believing on God through faith, that God answers our prayer, and then we start to not have faith anymore. Because what used to be walking on water is now safe, and it feels like we're back in the boat again. You know, and you, you and I got to constantly step out in faith. I want to talk to the 70-year-old in the room. I want to talk to the 80-year-old in the room. Your future still requires faith. Do not, do not allow your life to get to a place where you no longer have a hunger of faith. Yeah. Allow God to birth something new in you. Yeah. You have not completed everything that God has called you to do. You started by faith. You can't do anything else but complete in faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Faith sees. Faith has eyes to see. This is our, this first, just put up that first photo of like uh, the one I gave you the, the with the, Yeah, that one. Okay, so this is our first Sunday as a church in C3 Toronto. This wasn't actually during church because there's like one guy, one guy. This is is when we were setting up. And so this is right before church started. Um, We're doing sound check and we're getting things. And this was our first Sunday as a church. It was March 3rd. 2013. A little room in a university. and, uh, And we had faith. 
We had anticipation. There wasn't people sitting in these seats, but we knew that people were going to fill these seats. When people would come to our church in some of their early meetings and some of the team meetings, they would say, wow, you know, I can see that this church is small, but there's, some, there's a bigness here. And that would be the greatest compliment that I would have, like when people would come to the church. When people came to our church and they would, and they would not see in faith, and they would say, oh, I like this church because it's small. And I was like, good, well, you're not going to like it soon <laughs> because it's going to grow, because it's going to be fruitful. Yeah. And this room is, is too limited of a container, yeah. C3 Destiny. This room is not big enough. Some people see it. Who sees it? So this, this room is not the destiny of C3 Destiny. This room is not where this church is, is not this church's arrival point. We could fill this room four times over. We could find a new location. We could start a new location. What The eyes of faith are important. It's what started this church. It's what sustains this church. And it is what this church is going to. I got another photo. This is also our church. This was, this was at one of our anniversaries as a church when we went to a, 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 a very known, well-known venue in Toronto called Massey Hall. And Jess was the one that mentioned it first. We said, hey, where should we have our fifth anniversary as a church? And Jess said, Jess said oh, I think we should go to Massey Hall. And I said, I don't know if I have that much faith. <laughs> and this, this was our church. So it, it was amazing to see some of the fulfillment of what God had already started in those early days. And I don't know if you know this story, but um, Walt Disney, when he created Walt Disney World in Orlando or Florida, um, he actually, when the, when the theme park opened, he wasn't there when it opened. And he was getting, the, the team were getting interviewed on opening day by a reporter and the reporter said, hey, you know, isn't it really sad that Walt Disney never, never got to see this theme park opened? And the team said, well, he did see it. That's why it's here. He did get to see it. He may not have been alive. And there are, certain, there are things that are going to happen through Pastor Devin Clarence's vision that must happen, that are going to outlive long after they are gone. This is a generational thing that we're looking for. So my question to you in point one is what do you see? What do you see? Turn to, the, turn to the person next to you and say, what do you see? What do you see in your spirit right now? I'm less interested in what you see when your eyes are open and I'm more interested in what you see when your eyes are closed. Close your eyes right now. Picture the future. Picture lives saved. Picture people being set free. Picture people being healed, restored. And, and entering into their calling and their destiny. When Jesus, when God spoke to Jeremiah, he said, hey, I'm going to touch your mouth and put prophecy in your lips. And he touched his mouth with coals. And he said, he asked him these words, what do you see? Some of you just keep your eyes closed for a second more. Some of you have stopped seeing. Some of you have lost sight. Why? Because faith, because you've been pushed around, because circumstances have squeezed you, because, because you had once believed, but then something happened circumstantially that caused you to stop believing. Well, I want to say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right now, I say that your spirit, let it be filled with vision again. Let it be filled with sight again. Start to see what God is doing in your spirit. Start to believe. Again, you are called a believer, not a circumstantialer. Your circumstances are not yet lined up to the voice of God in your life. But if God is speaking and He is, then your faith has something to hang on to. And I want you to dream bigger dreams. I know Pastor Deb and Clarence want you to dream bigger dreams. They do not see the limitations on your life, but it's not so much about what they see, it's more about what you see. It's less about what they believe. I already know that they believe so much more about your life. I already know that when they think of their team and their leaders and their staff and their pastors, I already know that Deb and Clarence believe amazing things about your life. That's not in question. What's in question is what do you believe? What is your faith hanging on? And it's very crucial to the future of this church that we raise our children up with a level of faith 
that we raise uh, that we raise our sons and daughters up to believe and that you see you see amazing and big things in God. Somebody say amen. amen. God is calling you and it's impossible without faith. Okay, you can if you still close your eyes don't fall asleep. All right. <laughs> Number 2, labor prompted by love. Labor prompted by love. The price tag for the future of this house is high. It's high financially. It's high leader, like it's high, it's going to be a high cost on leadership. Where this church is going, what God is calling, like I, you, I don't believe Pastor Clarence would run around telling everybody that he's an apostle. But there is an apostolic nature about Pastor Deb and Clarence. They are stepping into regional director role and right now over 20 churches, but there are 200 churches coming. There is future churches that will be invited into and our leaders have an apostolic nature about them to take ground, to do things and the price is high. The Bible says that there is a problem, that the harvest is great, there is so much potential out there, but the laborers are few. Labor prompted by love. And God is less interested. We got lots of people in our church that we call, they're like Christian fireworks. They're really shiny for a second. And then they kind of burn out. I don't know that God is interested in Christian fireworks. God is not interested in people coming to destiny and committing to a team for a month. God is more interested, he's less interested in fireworks and he's more interested in hot coals. He's interested on a heat that generates from the inside of your spirit that sustains. Faith is faith, but faith over time becomes faithfulness. And God doesn't say, well done, good and, and person that believed once. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. And faith only becomes faithfulness at the finish line. And we have a lot of people in our church, even in the 10 years that our church has existed, that unfortunately are not in our church. Even I'm, talk, I'm thinking about Emmanuel and Melaine, and I'm so grateful that you're here, Emmanuel. Because yeah. when we walk down the, the corridor of Bible College, our Pastor Pat Ancliffe and some of the pastors toured us and they showed us photos of graduating classes and they said, I want you to look at these photos. And they said, listen, there's an unfortunate reality that not everybody in your class photo will still be following the Lord 10 years from now. And we couldn't believe it because we're all so passionate about Jesus. I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, like, no, we're all, not, maybe those classes because they're filled with heretics. But our class, we are the holy class. But no, I'm ashamed to say that not everybody in my class is still serving the Lord 20 years later. And, I, and I'm so grateful that that there be a person, be a faithful person. Yeah. What you say yes to, let your yes be yes. But, but this is a labor of love. And we're talking about Mother's Day and how many mothers know giving birth has some pain in it. Yeah. Anybody, somebody, who's a, who's a mom in the house? And, uh, you know, it, there, there, is, there is pain in labor. I witnessed my wife giving, labor th giving birth three times. And... Uh, she hasn't given birth any more than that. <laughs> and uh, and we, she had home births. And, uh, you know, because I don't know if you do home births here. Maybe we, but it's amazing. And because, and, you know, we can kind of put music on. We can kind of manage the atmosphere. But it was good for me because I could take breaks. So I would go down and I'd have a snack because this was intense. This was very intense for me. It was very, giving, having, having our children, it was a lot on me. Okay, you, you, you need to be grateful for what I went through. When, when Jess was um, having our children. Like, it was, it was a lot on her, but it was more intense on me. So I needed to take breaks. I just, she'd be like, Sam, I need you. I'd be like, just give me a minute, all right? No, no, no. No, it's not true, all right? I was, I was actually phenomenal in the, no, I wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, but it would be crazy to say to any loving mother, hey, you know, that's not worth it. Stop. Just don't do that. Like, don't, don't even think about, it. no, why? Because there's a vision greater than the pain. Yes. You know, something is coming. And I want to talk to people that, you know, you, you're hesitating to be a part of the team here. 
Or maybe you have once had been a part of a team in a different church, but you're, you're hesitating to opt in again. Because, I don't know, because it's difficult. Serving in kids ministry, serving on the worship team and actually practicing your instrument. I noticed F.A., he, wasn't, he, he, was, he had his eyes closed and he was leading in worship and he knew all the lyrics still. That tells me that you practice. It tells me that you love the Lord and you craft your craft outside of this moment. Right. It tells me that you, you, you labor because you understand that there is a, there is a vision. But, but you, know, you won't give in church financially the way God is calling you to give financially if you don't have a labor of love. Love is the motivation that get us to where we're going. Yeah. It, love is the thing that get us through. And there are difficult things. We toil as Christians. Yeah. Christianity, we got to stop. You know, we, there has been too much preaching over in America that tell people all the nice things about Christianity, but don't actually tell people the realities of what being a Christian is. Because there is some things that you and I need to toil through. What about toiling through growth as a Christian? What about dealing with offense? Has anyone ever gotten offended before? Oh, no, no one's gotten offended here. You're not pushing them hard enough, Pastor Clarence. No, there will, everybody, part of the gateway to your future is going through the gateway of offense. Just being, a, being an unoffendable person. That's, that's, that's you, that's ownership. There's no maliciousness here. There's no like abuse or, or anything. Like, I know that. But, you know, there'll be times where God is trying to develop something in you and me, but there is a toil of having to deal with offense. There is a toil of having to have, you know, feel like you, you've got something really great. Like, you know, this, I'm talking to the sound guys back here and, you know, you're just underappreciated. Well, boo-hoo. <laughs> you don't need it because you're not a... You, you, you're not an offendable person. You're not doing this. You're doing this because you serve the Lord. You're not looking to how great you do the things or whatever for you to get hugs and accolades from another person. You're doing this because you serve the Lord, because you're humble and because you have a labor of love on the inside of your spirit. You know, being challenged, facing convictions is hard. It's a toil. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, that's a toil. Continuing to step up and say yes. And I want to invite you, you know, I heard that, that there are people in this church that are serving in three or maybe four different roles and responsibilities. I want to encourage you to pick up responsibility in this house. I want to encourage you if, you, if you serve on a team, but you're a little bit reliable, I want to encourage you to step up in your reliability. And you might think to yourself, well, I don't have time to do that, Pastor Sam. No, you do have time. Everybody is busy. Everybody has 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Everybody has the same time resource as each other. Why is it that some people, I, I look at Pastor Phil Pringle and I'm like, man, how does he handle so much? He only has the same amount of time as me. So there is obviously either he is extra special or he has grown through capacity over the years. Yes, he's extra special. I don't want to, say, I don't want to diminish what's on Pastor Phil's life, but I'm also challenged to step up in my capacity. Right. I'm also challenged to step up in what I can handle in life and to continue. And I want to encourage you that, that there, if you are yet to be on a team here, I want to encourage you, there is a kid's team in another room right now that this is no babysitting club. This is helping the young prophets and prophetesses grow up in the Word of God and worshiping Jesus. And there is leaders and team that are using their voices into that ministry. And I want to encourage you, maybe you want to consider being a part of that. Don't delay another week. Sign up today. We just had ministry sign up month here over the last month. Hey, that's not just one month a year. Step up today. It might be your first Sunday here. And you're like, wow, you know, it's amazing to see these musicians on stage. I would love to serve in that way. Do you know what? You can. You can. Say yes. Say yes. And if, you, if you believe that you've got a creative gift, you believe that, oh, maybe, you know, that I can edit videos. I saw that video happening before. I can do graphic design or different things. Say yes. You're like, well, you know, like I do this all the week during a job or like I've got limited time. No, 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 you only have a limited mindset. You don't have limited time. You, you can break, you can, you can change that and be a person that carries responsibility here. I don't see no front row and back row in this church. This is all the front row. This, everybody that I'm looking at right now is the core team of tomorrow's destiny. There's a play on words in this church because this church is called Destiny. You know, 
We're, we're in the region of Sunway, but we know the way to the sun. I, I just did that right now. I just did that. But the, mo- the, the momentum and the potential of this church to lead thousands of people to Jesus is hindering on our ability to carry responsibility. The harvest is great and the work is a few. And I want to tell you that this is a labor of love. And I'm just going to get the keys up in this last point. So opt in today. Pastor Nicole, I don't know if she's called pastor, but Nicole, uh, the uh, EA, the executive, she, she would be more than happy to take down your details and help you like work it out and have a, conversa- have a conversation with someone today. Be like, hey, I'm not really sure where I'm needed in the church. And sometimes you come into a church like this and it looks like everything's handled, but trust me, it's not. Like there, there's always room because we're setting up for the future that's before us. Somebody say amen. 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 Love will always pay the highest price. Last point, endurance inspired by hope in Jesus. So where is, because it said that this church is chosen and there is power in the Holy Spirit. Where does our power come from? Where does our strength come from? Your strength to endure in the call of God on your life comes through none other than hope in Jesus Christ. Your strength. It, it, this, this whole thing that God has chosen us with power and conviction in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you. Somebody say strengthen. strengthen. That he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Your strength does not come from your bank account. Your strength does not come from a number of high fives. You might get encouraged. I might look at you and say, you're a legend, but it doesn't matter. Your strength doesn't come from Pastor Clarence acknowledging you. That will, that will be a fleeting strength. Yeah. It will cause your heart to flutter for a moment, but it will not give you the endurance to keep saying yes to Jesus. Your strength comes from your personal groundedness and plantedness in your personal faith and prayer life and relationship with the Holy Spirit. Your strength comes from that source. And that source is in you. We just talked about prayer on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. This arguably is the most important meeting this church has. The prayer meeting. You're like, well, I've never gone to that meeting. I always come on Sundays. Well, that's great. Maybe you should come to that meeting. Do you know the difference between somebody who's, someone who's new and maybe fresh in church and somebody that's mature in church is there are some people that come to church empty and leave filled. That is someone who is new, that's needing the church. There is a mature kind of person that comes to church filled and leaves empty. That is someone who's a contributor. That is someone that is enduring in the Holy Spirit. It is somebody that I want you to see yourself as that person. I want I don't I don't come to our church empty and leave filled. I come to our church, I came today filled, locked and loaded, ready to preach, but I want to leave here depleted. I want to leave here like I've served. I want to leave here like I gave something. FA is like that. He he will worship, leave, and leave nothing. Man, as you and I, as we step up and be those people, you are going to need an endurance that that is greater. You're going to need a relationship with Jesus. You're going to need something of substance, something of weight.